Jerome Powell just sent shockwaves through the financial system by saying that financial conditions are tightening after Silicon Valley banks collapse and that could slow the economy. Specifically, he said that financial conditions have tightened by more than the traditional indexes say, which means that the Fed chair of the United States is telegraphing that there's going to be a credit crunch in the financial sector throughout 2023, something that is likely to lead to an even worse recession, something that I reported to you all last week. But not only that, everyone, not only that, Powell also hiked interest rates by 25 basis points, putting the short-term federal funds rate all the way up to 4.9%, the highest it's been since 0607, right before the last financial crash. So folks, the parallels with 2007, 2008 keep stacking up. And I think we're on the precipice of seeing this economic recession or depression break loose. In fact, it might already be breaking loose, everyone, because the layoff announcements just keep getting worse day by day. As Amazon has now said that they're going to cut an additional 9,000 workers, but not only that, the job listing company Indeed just announced today that they're going to lay off 2,200 employees. And you got to pay attention to that one, everyone, because Indeed has the data on the US job market. Companies go to Indeed and give them their job listings to hire employees. So if Indeed is cutting 15% of their workforce, that's a sign that they're seeing something ahead in the US economy, which is not good. Specifically, the CEO of Indeed said that last quarter, job openings in the US were down 3.5% year over year, while sponsored job volume, which is companies paying Indeed to promote job listings, that fell 33%. So those words from Indeed CEO are pretty scary everyone but i know what some of you are thinking right like you're saying to yourself wait a minute we've been hearing about these corporate tech layoffs for over six months now and we still haven't seen the recession really gain steam and that's causing a lot of people to believe that we're not going to actually have a, a severe recession i mean i polled you guys and i asked you what's your prediction on the economic outlook for the rest of 2023 and actually 12 percent of you said that we're gonna have a soft landing where nothing that bad happens, while 33% of you said we're gonna have a normal recession. Meaning half of you said that what's coming really isn't gonna be something that's that severe. But folks, you gotta understand at first, there is a lag effect to these layoffs. At first, it's gonna seem like it's only specific jobs, specific white collar workers in certain industries that are getting laid off and it's no big deal. But after a while, what happens is that the layoffs of white collar workers are gonna to lead to reduced consumer spending in the economy. And it's gonna be that reduced consumer spending which is going to cause layoffs all across the economy. And I think when those layoffs hit, the system's gonna come crashing down because right now the relationship of uh, how much things cost and inflation to how much money people make just doesn't make sense. People can't afford to pay their bills. And if, if you don't believe me, let's actually just go on Indeed right now and see what the current job listings look like. I'm on Indeed in a city like Seattle looking at full-time jobs. What do we see? You can become a crew member at a pizza place, a uh, full-time position where you earn 16 to $17 an hour. Okay, that's one job. Or you can become a retail sales associate at Dick's Sporting Goods earning $19 an hour. Or you can become a dental assistant and earn anywhere from $43 to $54,000 a year. Or you can become a stalker at a fishery supply company and earn $19 to $20 an hour. Those are the type of jobs that are on Indeed right now in the US economy in 2023 in this so-called robust labor market. And those 20 to $25 an hour full-time jobs are simply not cutting it. Because if we go on Zillow and look at rentals in Seattle, I mean, we could see 2,000 a month, 1,800 a month, 2,500 a month, 2,200 a month, 2,300 a month, all for a one bedroom. So how is a typical worker supposed to live in this inflationary economy earning 20, $25 an hour? I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Let alone, how does the typical worker afford a house using revenge app, I'm looking at the typical monthly house payment for a home buyer in Seattle with mortgage, interest, property taxes, insurance. That's $4,500 a month right now. If you want to buy a house in Seattle Metro, prepare to pay $4,500 a month for your home ownership costs. And you can conduct that same analysis I just did for most cities in America, which makes me kind of incensed when I still see people try to say that this economy is healthy and that there's no recession and there's not going to be a recession. Because the, the people who try to say that, usually they're mainstream media, 
Usually they're part of the government. Usually maybe they're like a realtor or real estate investor. And they all have a vested interest in kind of seeing the status quo continue. So they're going to spin any narrative they can to make you think that things are good and that things are going to continue to be good. And you know, we're seeing these narratives spun about the housing market right now, folks. Like just this week, I saw this article on CNBC, which was boasting about a 15% spike in home sales that occurred in February. And they quoted the chief economist of the National Association of Realtors who said that changing mortgage rates are prompting home buyers to take advantage of rate declines, suggesting that that's what drove a 15% increase in home sales. The whole problem with that article and that narrative is that the home sales in February were awful. They were the worst home sale figures we saw in the month of February going back over 10 years. But that wasn't in any of the headlines. That wasn't in any of the traditional reporting. Nor was the fact that mortgage applications to buy a house continue to collapse down to the lowest index level we've seen in 30 years. So even if home sales spiked for one month up 15%, which is still the worst February in a decade, these plummeting mortgage applications suggest that home sales in March and April are gonna start going down again. And so make no mistake, the traditional American home buyer they are out on the housing market. They want nothing to do with it. They don't have enough money, and even if they did have enough money, they don't want to buy an overvalued house at a 6.5% mortgage rate, which is why the mortgage applications are so bad. However, as I said in the previous video, we are seeing some investors and cash buyers come back into the market. These investors are mistakenly thinking that now is a good time to buy. And you know, for a little while, maybe they can push home sales up a bit and they can make it seem for a couple months like there's an actual recovery in the housing market. But make no mistake, folks, there is no recovery right now, especially in a state like California, where we can see the home sales are down 30 to 40% year over year. So they were down about 23% nationally, but in these metros in California, like San Diego, Riverside, LA, Bakersfield, Merced, Stockton, Sacramento, San Francisco, Redding, they were down anywhere from 30 to 40%. And a state like California is really taking this recession and housing downturn on the chin because it's so exposed to the tech sector. I mean, for basically over a decade, California hollowed out its population. Anyone who wasn't in tech or media making a lot of money was forced to leave. And now that tech and media is what's in the crosshairs of this recession, we're finding out that California's economy actually wasn't so strong. And I think California is going to be in for multiple, multiple years of decline, both in its housing market and its economy, because that's simply what California does. It's the most volatile state economically speaking over the last three or four decades. It has big booms, but it also has big busts, and those big busts last for a while, and we are just in year one of that bust. I expect it to go on for another five years. But as you can see, folks, it's not just California. These other metros in orange on this map, like Phoenix and Vegas, all the way up to Montana, and all the way actually up into the Northeast, we're seeing big declines in home sales, big declines in buyer demand. I'm especially intrigued with what's going on in the Northeast here around New York and upstate New York and parts of Massachusetts is we hadn't really seen a slowdown in buyer demand yet. Well, now that's starting to hit up in the Northeast. So I'm hoping for more inventory and lower prices there very soon. And frankly, folks, I don't see much that can save the U.S. housing market at this point. I mean, the home buyer demand is terrible. The sentiment's terrible. 79% of Americans now think it's a bad time to buy a home. They're not being swayed by mortgage rates that have gone down a little bit. Like after Powell's speech today, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate went from 675 down to 6.45%, which is still very high, especially when you look at the five-year history. I mean, we were dealing with mortgage rates that are too high given where home prices are today. And so ultimately, folks, I see both declining mortgage rates and declining home prices into the future of the U.S. housing market, which sounds like kind of a crazy thing to suggest given that Jerome Powell just hiked interest rates by another 25 basis points. But when he hiked those interest rates, the bond market didn't follow suit. Mortgage rates didn't go up, they went down. And that's because the bond market in investors are starting to realize what's in the cards for the U.S. economy, that all these layoffs and the financial tightening that Powell's talked about in his speech today, this is not going to be good. And more and more, people are going to begin to realize that declining interest rates is not something that's going to save this economy or housing market. In fact, declining interest rates is 
always what happens uh, at the beginning or on the precipice of a recession. And let's actually just talk about interest rates a little more for a second. So Powell hiked by 25 basis points today, but he actually indicated that ongoing rate hikes might not happen anymore and that there might be basically only one more rate hike in 2023 after this. Right now, the betting markets are suggesting that by the next Fed meeting on May 3rd, there's a 50-50 chance that we're gonna see either them keep at the current Fed funds range of 475 to 500 basis points or go up another quarter point to 500 to 525 basis points. And so in some ways, Powell's recent speech does mark a bit of a pivot. It's a pivot away from the ultra hawkishness against inflation. And it's more of like this idea that we're entering recession and that you better get prepared whether you're a bank or a consumer because it's coming. Now, the one thing that could throw a wrench in this whole prediction that I'm making is inflation inflation because inflation is being awful stubborn right now. Not only is it still at 6% year over year, but we're starting to see certain leading indicators of inflation pick back up. USA Today is reporting that used car prices are going back up again. They showed data from the Mannheim Used Vehicle Index that shows that while used car prices went down a lot through the end of 2022, in the beginning of 2023, they are now going back up due to an increase in demand. And used cars account for about 5% of core inflation, so that's not nothing. And since used car prices are going up, that means that core inflation might go up. And so maybe in three months, Powell is going to have to get back on the train of aggressively hiking interest rates in the future to tame inflation. And so there's still lots of uncertainty about what's going to happen into the future. And, and I don't think Powell did a good job today outlining for the American people what the future is going to be. You know, he's giving this wishy-washy take of we're going to increase interest rates a little bit, but say we're not going to increase them in the future. And also say that all this money we printed to rescue the banks isn't going to be inflationary because it's going to be paid back. And he could be right about some of that stuff. But I got to tell you, everyone, it's awful confusing for a lot of people out there. We're gonna to have to track the data in future weeks and future months to really see where the economy is going. The leading indicators, they're not good, especially for certain cities in the US housing market. So I'm gonna take you back to this map one more time showing the decline in home sales in America. And I wanna actually point you to parts of Florida right now and parts of the panhandle and certain parts of the South because we're starting to see another interesting trend develop in the US housing market. And that's a collapse in home buyer demand in vacation towns. That's right, everyone. The buyers have left the building in vacation specific markets where there's a lot of second home ownership. You can see this by looking at the markets with the biggest decline in home sales year over year. Sevierville, Tennessee, Key West, Florida, Hawaii, Lake Havasu City, Arizona, Daphne, Alabama, Panama City, Ocean City and Atlantic City, New Jersey, Hilton Head Island, all the way up to Miami, where home sales are down 36% year over year in Miami. I know a lot of you've been waiting for the Southeast Florida housing market to crash. Well, it looks like that might be starting now with a decline in buyer demand. And ultimately it makes sense that home buyer demand in vacation destinations has plummeted. For the most part, these buyers are making completely discretionary purchases buying second homes. So when you know a recession starts or there's economic uncertainty or mortgage rates go up, a lot of people might say, yeah, I, I don't need to buy that second home right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see big declines in home prices in second home and vacation destinations. That's actually something that happened back in 06, 07. And actually a study came out in the Journal of Real Estate Economics last year that proved this point. They found that areas with higher second home buying demand from 06 to 07 experienced a sharper boom and a bigger bust. So be very, very careful if you're a homeowner and home buyer in vacation destinations or in California or in the Northeast where we're seeing demand go down or pretty much in the entire Western half of America. This crash is just getting started, especially as financial conditions continue to tighten.